Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, fall has officially arrived, which means frost and cold freezes are just around the corner. I'm on the deck just off the north end of my house where most of my succulents call home here this time of year and the evening temps are starting to get a little bit low. As a matter of fact, just last night for the first time this season, I brought in some plants. So I went down to the plant room to make sure I had a spot for some of my well, more sensitive trees and brought a few in because I have so many trees, I have to make sure I get a jump start in it. So I brought in a tray full of trees and we brought them down and I did a little bit of pruning here, a little bit of pruning there on a couple of the uh, um, melinas that I have growing, some cuttings from the melinas. Now the melinas are a particular uh, tree that need a lot of warmth and so as we get down into the 40s at night, melinas aren't going to be too happy. So that tropical tree is one of those early ones to go into my plant room down in the basement. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the bonsai shuffle. So folks in uh, Minnesota and all of course across the upper Midwest we are concerned about our trees getting too cold and of course getting them inside soon enough um, so they don't have much damage. And those are gonna be our succulent trees and those are gonna be our tropical trees. Now there's a lot to consider with the bonsai shuffle and really the biggest thing to consider for most of us is just how many trees we have. So let's take a quick peek at the succulent collection I have on my deck here and we'll talk about those first. So these first images is gonna include an update actually right away, but here are the Portulacaria afras that I uh, pruned, uh, oh, about a month ago that we did trim back and they really started to grow the last couple of weeks of summer as we ended in, uh, landed into the official first part of fall. And there's the forest, which has done pretty well. We got all that new shoot, all those long growths to the left and right of these, uh, uh, these uh, trees. It's all new growth. So we're certainly loving that. When we see growth like this over here and growth over here, this is all really some new shoots on these trees, which is super nice. And I'll bring it back to the tree here. This one is the tree we had the big major cut on. So again, if you go back to the uh, footage, the last show that I did some Portulacaria Afra prunes, this one, I had a big chop back there and we made this tree completely different looking. And now look at the tree. Look at these long shoots that have grown on all of these limbs. So there's that, um, again, that perfect example of we make these big cuts and all that energy from that big section of the tree went down into the lower sections and started to put all these other branches into the main glory of this tree. Now this tree almost looks like it's a full tree again in just a short few weeks. Pretty cool. So now let me go take you to the cutting of that tree. It rooted and it's doing really well. Let's go take a peek. There's a small cutting from a different Portulacaria afra at a different time, but right here is the potted up top section of that Portulacaria afra that I was just showing you. And so you can see right down in here, all of this nice growth down here, it got longer and look at all the little new buds in here. Little, 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 all these little shoots. That's all new since this was cut and put into this soil. So I put it in that soil. I didn't water for about a week or so and misted it at first and then light waterings. And that is totally a new Portulacaria Afra tree, love and life. Let's show you some other of the succulents on the, on the benches up here on the porch. Continuing on the benches on my deck on the north side of my house, we've got all kinds of PA cuttings here doing really, really well. The one I'm excited about the most is the variegated cascade Portulacaria afra, and I believe is also cork bark. We'll find out as this thing gets older. If it is, my recollection is right, this is one of the cork barks. But this growth was really slow all year, and finally in the last month, most of this is new growth. And what I mean by new growth is all of this out here. This extended twice as long as it was, twice as long as it was, twice as long, twice as long. We got a nice shoot down here, and all the stuff on top too really taken off that variegated. This variegated as well is doing pretty well, getting some nice growth as well. So we've got some PAs all up in there, some of them cork bark, some of them just a regular um, Portulacaria afra, the mini jade, and there's a couple of big jades in the middle. This one's really leafing out here as we finish up summer and head in to the plant room soon for the winter months as fall is getting colder. 
As we move along, here's the forest of three that we cut back about a month ago, and look at all the new shoots on that as well. As you zoom in a little bit closer here, you can see the new growth, a couple inches either direction, top, down, new leaves. I just really loved life towards the end of summer here. So I love that transition between the hot July, August months as it starts to cool off just a little bit. That end of the summer, these PAs just love life out here. We move down the uh, row a little bit. We got another big jade shooting up all kinds of new leaves and a couple of PAs again. This is the twin trunk that we got going and it got real thick here again in the last couple of weeks. So look at all that growth on that left side of the smaller of the two trees. This is shot completely straight out. Now it's looking at us, of course, we'll cut that off, but all of that growth thickening up those trunks. And this one's getting thick too. And then as we come over here, we have our Thanksgiving cacti. So this is my original Thanksgiving cactus. And it's uh, doing really, really well, thickening up now. It didn't gain a lot of height this year, but it really thickened up in the last month or so. And so we've got all kinds of branches. And uh, we'll bring this inside, and we'll tell you about that in just a little bit as well with these other ones. We've got a twin here, a couple of trees in the pot there, and then a solo one right next to it. So the uh, Thanksgiving cacti might be coming in tonight as well. So one of the things I want you all to remember about bringing stuff in and out and in and out, there's a couple of things we talk about in the bonsai world. And I've had a chance to interview a lot of different people with my uh, Up North Bonsai podcast uh, from Upper Midwest uh, Growers of Bonsai and, and just the people in the Minnesota Bonsai Society Club. And we talk about this bonsai shuffle a lot. So do we bring these trees in and bring them out and bring them in and bring them out? Well, the first thing that most people seem to, uh, to agree on is that these trees will not get better light than the natural sunlight. So as long as we can keep them outside, the better. Outside, outside, outside. But then the temperatures start to fall. So we want as much regulation with our temperatures in our trees as well, right? So we don't want things to go super down real fast and super up real high uh, in that frost, uh, freeze, thaw cycle. We gotta be careful of that. But here's the thing to consider. If it goes down to like 45 tonight, which is the projected low, will these Portulacaria aphras and jades be okay? They're succulents. This is not really ideal temps for them, but in the daytime, we're still hitting 60s, and we're gonna be in the 70s by this weekend. 45 tonight, do I or don't I? Many people with their ficus trees and some tropical varieties, and even their Portulacarias, might leave these out even into the 40s. Now, just because it hits 45 this morning or tomorrow morning, will that be chilly for these trees? Probably. And the leaves on the outside part of the bonsai is gonna be probably 45 degrees. But will the root structure be 45 degrees? Maybe that's still at 46, 47. And so uh, it's gonna be probably okay for most of our plants. But now the succulents and the uh, Thanksgiving cacti, uh, maybe that's pushing it just a little bit. But here's the thing to keep in mind. Depending upon the size of your pot, depth of the soil, um, and the soil size you're using, how much water retention is in there, um, how fast are these pots gonna heat up and cool down? And so at night, when it gets down to 45, maybe those roots don't quite get down to all the way to 45. Maybe they are a degree or two higher than that. So we're gonna base some of our decisions based on how big the pots are. So let me show you for an example. Um, when I have this little itty bitty pot, is that gonna get cold faster than this thicker pot? Deeper soil, more volume of soil, and will that hold its uh, heat just a little bit longer? I've got some three by fours, I've got uh, some you know weird sizes, and so some of the smaller ones, yeah, they might get cold. Some of the bigger ones, they might be okay. And even if the roots did get to 45, they're not quite ready to go dormant yet, um, especially for our trees that are used to some of these cold in our climate, like uh, some of our native maples and our pines, our tamaracks, you know, our junipers, they're gonna be totally fine outside. This little cold spell coming is not gonna be bad. So the forecast is going to be for about 35 tomorrow. So that's still not even a frost if it hits 35. And sometimes when they say 35, it could be 32, but it also could be 38, and again, is that one night? Is that one night gonna cause problems for the trees? Now, if you have 150 trees like I do, or 100 to 150, bringing in that many trees on a night that's gonna hit freezing is probably not worth your time, if you have the time to even do that. 
So as I mentioned earlier, I bought a few uh, trees in yesterday to, to lighten my load and they're just gonna be the trees that I know um, I'm just gonna leave for the rest of the year. These are the next ones on my list. My porch carry Afras, and then I have a couple of tropicals and ficus to consider. But first, because the porch carry Afras are probably my next sensitive plant that I'm concerned about, we're gonna go ahead and put these over on the workbench and we're gonna get them prepared for the plant room. So let's do that right now. Phase one is partially done. I got most of my succulents right here. I've got the holiday cactus, the Thanksgiving cactus. I've got the porch carry afras and a couple of the bigger jades and we have our mixture, okay? So I have some neem oil and I have water and a little bit of soap for that emulsion. And we're gonna have the neem oil and we're gonna spray it all on here and just get rid of any soft bodied bugs and we're gonna take care of those. So our main idea is that we don't wanna bring bugs into the house. So if I'm gonna keep these into the house, I want them to be bug free. Now, I may bring some of these back out. I may decide not to. This is the choice that I have to make. So to save myself from a lot of work tomorrow, I'm gonna to bring these in tonight and I might stop there. And then tomorrow, before tomorrow night's low into the 30s, lower 30s, lower to mid 30s, um, I might bring in some more. But let's get these all sprayed up and ready to go. We have the trees all sprayed with the neem oil. We got the fronts, we got the sides, we got the backs, we got everything I think taken care of. Um, uh, try to get it from underneath as best as possible in a nice general spray. Now with the neem oil, we typically don't want to put this on in the heat of a summer day, but this is a beautiful night. We got about an hour left of light. It's cooler out. We get the neem oil on here and then we're going to go ahead and spray this off in about uh, 15 to 30 minutes. So while we do that, let's go take a peek at the other trees I'm considering bringing in for tonight. My next decision is the hibiscus, and I think I'm gonna bring this inside. And here's a reason why. Though I have a good deep pot with a lot of good bonsai soil, I'm concerned because of the work I've done to this tree. So keep that in mind when you're gonna take a tree in to your plant room or your cold frame for the season. Some people ask, do you need to put it in a cold frame? Um, and if the answer is no on a typical tree that's temperate or it's gonna be uh, something that's going completely dormant, like our junipers and our pines and some of our uh, local maples and uh, elms and trees like that, they can be outside uh, in the winter and freeze solid and they're gonna be pretty good in a bigger pot, right? As long as the pot is a hardy pot and won't break. So make sure your pot doesn't have any lips where the soil can uh, get underneath, stretch, and then break the pots. Um, we wanna make sure it's a, a cold, hardy pot. But now, this of course is a tropical tree, so I want that indoors eventually. And so I think I wanna bring this inside because I don't want this tree to have too much stress because it already had stress. I repotted it pretty late in the season. I did have some more shoots and um, some new growth and I'm liking that, but I don't wanna risk this cold weather. So I think this is gonna become the house plant starting today. We'll get this inside into the plant room. So let's spray this one so it's ready to go inside. Mm -hmm. There, we got the hibiscus all uh, sprayed with the neem oil and we're ready to get this sprayed off with the hose in about 15, 20 minutes as well and we'll bring this inside. And then it's gonna be a nice cozy plant room for the west, rest of winter and should put out some new growth and just fill up real nicely. That's the hope anyway. So we're gonna bring this inside after it's sprayed out as well. Let's move on to the next set of trees. Up next is the Trangularis ficus, the variegated Trangularis ficus tree. Now because this is a new species to me, although it be a ficus, um, it's new to me. I don't know how it's going to react with this cold weather. So this is another tree that I want to bring inside for the reason that I don't know how this species is going to react. I don't want to risk it getting cold tonight into the 40s and then the 30s tomorrow night and it's just going downhill and just not liking life. So we're going to do this one as well. We're going to spray it and bring it inside. So on a recent show, I updated the new leaves on this and they're all growing continually. They're getting bigger. They're probably twice the size as the last time I shot the episode uh, a good 12 to 14 days ago. So it's filling in and starting to get real thick again, which I'm really excited about. And the other exciting news is the cuttings. 
So I wasn't sure if the cuttings were alive and if we're getting roots or not down below, but I know they're still alive because look right here. We've got some little growth on the cuttings as well, which means we're gonna have a couple more plants to maybe give away to somebody. Let's spray these things down. Last year down in my plant room, the biggest problem I had with bugs were these little white flies that seemed harmless, but the more they grew, the more in number, it seemed like it would make a few leaves dry up and fall off or just die off. It didn't seem to affect the health of the overall tree, at least that I could tell. So I really wanna make sure I bring nothing in. And then down in the plant room, I might have to bring some of these into the shower downstairs and spray them off once in a while if these white flies persist. So far there's none down there, but it's only September and I only have a few plants down there. So we're gonna spray these. Spray them with water in just a little bit here, 15 to 20 minutes. And this will be also some of the trees we bring in tonight, so I don't have to do it later in the season. And will it be a little detrimental with a little less light on a couple of these last remaining warm days? Yeah, I could probably do the bones ice shuffle and bring some of them out again, but we'll see. Maybe this weekend, these will get a glimpse of the sun for a couple of days. I'll bring these out, just these two, uh, and see how it goes. But I'm not gonna bring all the 30, uh, uh, porch carries I have that's just gonna be too much work So I think they're just gonna be permanently put inside and we're just gonna call it a season because they've grown so well And my porch carries really love my indoor light setup. So I think they're gonna be just fine So this one's been sprayed with the neem oil. Uh, let's see if there's anything else for tonight So we are in the last week of September and a weekend ago we had the last MBS workshop with some tropical replants and a couple of junipers. We had a great turnout and just a wonderful people that had some really cool trees when they were done. And so just when I thought I'd be able to have my yard back with plenty of bench space, um, I didn't get rid of as many trees as I was hoping to get rid of uh, for some people to work on some new uh, pre-bonsai nursery stock that I have in stock. And so I just shuffled things around. So we have a few um, tiger bark ficuses left over, so I'm really gonna uh, have a really cool, fun workshop, I think, next year, possibly a youth workshop with those. Uh, who knows, we're gonna see. Um, I've got a whole bunch of boxwoods here that have kind of filled up some space, and I've got some of my leftover larches over here, and then all my tropicals up top, um, a couple of them anyway. We've got, uh, what do we got here? Oh no, these are the elm forests. We've pruned, uh, pruned those back. We do have some premnas out here. So those are the ones I'm gonna consider bringing in. We got some premnas. Um, this right here, a chefflera, that's gonna go in maybe two tonight, I don't know. Uh, I've not grown a chefflera yet to know if this is gonna be a cold night for them or not. Um, these elms will be fine out here. The Catoni Astra will be fine. And my barberry that had a real tough mid-season, I think due to overwatering, is starting to bounce back, so that's nice. But these little guys right here, we have all these premnas in these small pots. And so these premnas or my variegated Benjamina, um, you know, this one's been through better times, but it's rebounding nicely. And this one right here is just some cuttings. We still have this cutting in a little nursery pot here. Um, these premnas are again, not a ficus tree, but a tropical variety that really will like the warm weather. I think these are also ones I'm gonna bring in uh, for the remainder of the season and make sure that they love the warmth, the humidity uh, of the plant room. So let's get these premnas uh, sprayed down with the neem oil and then we can bring these inside too. And that might do it for the trees for tonight. The trees have all had neem oil on now for about 20 to 30 minutes, so now it's time to wash them clean with a hose. So just get a good soaking of all the trees, one good final watering from out here, and then we'll start to let these uh, drip dry, and we'll start to bring them into the house. So now we get to turn on the hose and give them a good spray down, spray off any bugs that are on there, and get off all that neem oil. There we go. We have all the trees sprayed with neem oil. We have sprayed off all that neem oil with some a good uh, mild jet propulsion on the uh, shower here to get all the neem oil off and any bugs that might be on here. 
Now as the sun continues to set pretty fast, as it gets darker really fast, we're gonna get a couple of uh, trays and get these into the plant room. So we got some work uh, cut out for us. Yeah, that was a workout in itself. I think we've accomplished phase two of the evening's events. So to recap, we looked at some of our porch lucaria aphras, the succulents, and a couple of jades, our premnas, our Thanksgiving cactuses, we have the strangularis ficus, we've got the hibiscus tree, uh, we've got some on the ground over there, one, two, three, four, five bins and some Wow, okay, so they all are in the house now, in the plant room, and I have to think, hmm, where are they all gonna go? I think I know the answer to that for the most part. My Portulacaria Afras really liked the um, LED lights that I had in the plant room before in that little greenhouse area. You can look back at other videos to see how I constructed that. I did shift it around a little bit now so we have better access, and so I'm gonna put a whole bunch of plants over there. Now there's a couple of boot trays I still wanna pick up, my big favorite ones, so they all be in a good boot tray. But in the meantime, I just gotta get these other lights. So they've been sprayed with the neem oil, they've been sprayed with water from the hose, should be bug free, and boy, I worked up such a sweat, I had to change my clothes before I could continue shooting. So now we have to move some trees around. So I'm gonna to have to revamp a little bit of my green room here, my plant room, and make some room back in the closet, and we'll continue from there. So give me a second. Yeah. There. Now we are in the greenhouse area. This shelf was over here last year, but I pushed it over here. We just got some stuff we got to move around. So for right now, we're just going to toss them somewhere close where they can hang up on top, watering bottles. We got 68.9 degrees, and the humidity right now in my plant room is 82%. Now, part of that is because I just brought all these plants in here and they've all been watered. There's a lot of moisture in the air. So we have a nice um, tray up here. We've got a couple of nice big trays over on this one. This bottom tray isn't one of my nicer ones. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna swap that one out. I'm gonna swap that one out for one of my really nice trays. We're gonna plug in our lights and see if they work. So I've got my, I've got my LED lights, the foot by foot panels that I have. And uh, I'll try to remember to put links as to which ones I purchased. They're anywhere from that $25 to $35 range. They've lasted really long. They've got that full spectrum, but they do give off that pink color. I may stay away from that pink color in the future, uh, but uh, for right now, my Porsche the Carries really love these, so I think I'm in good shape. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug these in and see if we can get some light on the subject. And there we go. So. I've got lights, I've got lights, I've got lights, I've got, hmm, interesting, interesting, interesting. Something seems to be going awry. So let's see what we got here for our lights down here. After pushing a few buttons, I managed to get all my lights on. So we see this purpley hue in here, so that's not the best for camera, but it is going to be lighting up the uh, plants really, really well. So now that the lights work, let's turn them off and let's just get the plants in here and we'll see how things are going.
porch look curious. Let's hit the lights. And there we have the growing. Now, these lights are only about four inches from the PAs and they really will love life. Down here, they're about six to eight inches off the ground. So I can raise this up a little bit with these uh, four by fours and raise the whole thing up a little bit and that would get those closer to the lights. So why don't we experiment with that? Let me see if we have a couple long enough ones. From there. So as I mentioned before, my porch lacaries really love these uh, grow lights with these uh, pink purple hues and I wanted to get them closer to the lights and so now they're more like oh probably 8 inches now. They were about 10 to 12 inches so 8 inches is better than 10 to 12. These are anywhere from about uh, oh 6 on up to 4 over here so they're looking really good as well. So lots of PAs. I'm loving the Portugal Carrier Afros, can you tell? Now we have to figure out what's going to go on the next benches. And those are going to probably be, for right now, some of the Premnas and uh, the rest of these um, uh, J plants and possibly the uh, holiday Thanksgiving cactuses. So let's turn these lights on. We'll turn off the purple hues and let's get this light on. I think I have all the cables set up for these top two shelves over here. These were previously fish tanks. And let's see if we have light and go. There we go. All right. So now we have light over here and uh, we are in good shape. one Premna. We're gonna have to put this one by the window. I don't have room for this Premna. This is one of the chops we had. So here's a chop right here and it's still growing. Two new uh, branches right there. We've kept it as a possible so you never know what's gonna happen with this one. We'll put this one over by the window for right now. So there we have uh, a pretty decent setup for our trees this evening. Um, for the first stretch of time in here, we'll leave these in here and I'll probably do some rearranging and talk about these trees uh, in the course of the next uh, couple of weeks and months. I will say as a reminder, if you take the holiday cactuses and we put them in a darker environment, less light, less water, cooler temperatures, we'll get a lot more buds on these for flowers in the next couple of months. So what I'll do is I'll leave them in here for a little bit to acclimate to indoors. And then from here, I'll take them to a cooler room. I'll water them much less and I'll keep the cooler temperatures in there, drier and uh, less light. And uh, hopefully we'll get a whole bunch of buds on the holiday cactuses. So the greenhouse quote unquote area of my plant room is all set up and they're ready to go. So as a quick little summary, remember, we might not have to bring in all these plants right now, but if the plant is new to you, if it's a tropical tree and you're just concerned, sometimes tropicals below 50 will start to act weird. Some of the ficuses might, but some people leave them out down into the 40s, even the upper 30s. Um, some of these trees I've worked on recently. Some of the stuff we'll show next I've worked on recently. And so we don't want them to suffer any of these cold temperatures. We're just going to put them in a nice plant environment and hopefully they'll love that and start to make their adjustments. Um, so if the plant size has got a really tiny little pot, right, and that's going to get colder faster, we might bring in those trees for the night or two that's going to be cold. And then we could bring all these trees back outside because it's going to be into the 70s this weekend with some more sunshine. So I think everything's going to be really, really good for the next couple of weeks. But because this took me the better part of two, three hours to do all this, um, granted that I'm filming and moving camera stuff around and trying to figure out what I'm going to do next, you know, one hour to do this every night just with this part of my collection, I think we're going to leave most of them. We're going to leave them here. I might bring some of the bigger trees out on the porch for a couple of days when it's really nice this weekend. We'll see how much energy I have and if I want to do the bonsai shuffle. We're going to wrap up today by the north facing window. So yesterday I did bring a few trees in uh, a day early. I got the melinas in. The melinas I've been told can be very sensitive. Those in the premnas might not love the, like those lows below 50. So I brought the melinas in, some cuttings from the melinas. We did a couple little quick trims. And then we have the Ming Aurelias in here. And then back in the corner here, I've got my uh, what's called the uh, goldfish plant. And so when these uh, get a little bit of a bloom, they have an orange little bloom. It almost looks like a little bitty uh, orange tree. 
but they're called the goldfish uh, plant. And so I've got one itty bitty plant right here, a little bud rather flower that wants to, to bloom. And that might be an orange flower here in the coming weeks. So those are a little more sensitive too, so I brought those in as well. So we've got those trees in protection. These are just some plants that I have from my family that we're gonna shift over here to the fish tank. And uh, we're gonna make some room for our final plants for today. So let's get our triangular under this light right here. It's just gonna fit. Wow, that's pretty close to that light, huh? That's touching that light. So you might have to raise the light just a little bit. In the meantime, I'm gonna put it right there. And then we have our cutting from our triangularis. We'll put that right here. We have that premna I was talking about. And real quickly here, we have the hibiscus tree, which is kind of between the window and that light and the fish pot tank, um, which if you notice here, the fish pot tank does not have any water in it yet. So I've been doing some repairs, more updates on that to come. The hibiscus will sit here for the time being. I might put it on this bench over here and get a light shining on it. But right now it's gonna get this residual light, the light from the window and the light from this right here, which is a pretty powerful light. Things might start growing this way, who knows. So there's the hibiscus and the uh, fish pot tank. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. I think that's gonna do it for the plant room today. We got all these trees in here, maybe about two thirds of what needs to be in here. I hope it's not a half. If it's a half, I'm in trouble. But we've got everything pretty neatly spaced right now. The lights are working. We'll get all the timers set up so we get about maybe 10 hours of light right now. Uh, we're gonna go up to about uh, 12 to 14 later in the winter and as we get pushing towards spring, 14 to 16 hours to slowly wake them things back up and they'll be ready to go out in the spring again. So the cycle begins. We're now in the plant room season for these trees. I think most of them will stay in here. I might bring this one out, the hibiscus, uh, over the weekend for some more sun. but. It's just a lot of work, so I think I'm comfy cozy just having them in here in a really nice secondary environment. Hey, and that is going to do it for now. Take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we'll catch you very, very soon. <music>